Okay, g'day all and welcome to another tune. So today we're going to look at uh, fast multiplication with LEA. This is an x86 optimization technique for assembly programming. Uh, and it's really, really interesting. So we're going to look at uh, multiplying registers by constants using LEA and other instructions. Uh, oh yeah, if you're into music, go over and have a look at my new music channel. If I remember, I'll put a link in the video description. And if I don't, then I won't. All good. Okay, so the IMAL instruction is what we're looking at. Speeding up, uh, IMAL is the x86 instruction for signed integer multiplication, and on modern hardware it's pretty fast. I think the um, modern CPUs get through about one per clock cycle or so. Uh, but it's slower than an LEA, or an ADD, or a SHIFT, so there's a bunch of quicker instructions than IMAL. And the tricks that we're going to look at are generally, I think, I think they always are, uh, good for signed or unsigned integers, but I mean I haven't checked all the numbers. I can't see why they wouldn't work for uh, both signed and unsigned, since the instructions that we're using aren't actually signed. Uh, however, in the examples, I'm going to be using IMAL just because it's got an easier to uh, easier to code and read syntax. Okay, so before we get started, we should have a quick rundown of the LEA instruction in general. Uh, it stands for Load Effective Address, and it's used to point registers to various places in RAM. So the syntax for it is LEA, and then you give uh, a register operand, and then you supply some address using uh, any uh, valid MASM addressing mode, or whatever assembly you're using, you don't have to use MASM. Uh, the register can be 16, 32, or 64-bit general purpose register. And the 16-bit ones, I think, are really slow. So LEA with the 16-bit register is uh, really slow. So we're mostly talking here about 32 and 64-bit general purpose registers. Okay, so in general, this is what this is kind of how LEA was intended to be used. So we could, for instance, if uh, RCX is pointing to some value in RAM, we could point RAX to the same value with uh, something like that, LEA, RAX, RCX. Uh, you can also use SIB addressing, which we're going to look at in a fair bit of detail in a minute. Uh, that's that second example there. Uh, you can point registers to constant addresses if you want, if there happens to be something really interesting. At, <laughs> at 5345, you might want to move that address into EAX. I don't know. Maybe there's something really good there. Have a look. <laughs> I'll be surprised if your program can read it. Anyway, uh, you might also want to point a register to a variable. So maybe my var is declared in your data segment somewhere. And you might want to point RAX to that so that you can change it remotely using uh, RAX as a pointer. Good. Alrighty, but the twist and the crux of this tutorial is that LEA doesn't actually read memory. All it does is uh, it calculates the address and whether the address is readable or writable to the program or not, uh, LEA will never generate a segmentation fault, which is really, really cool. Uh, because if you think about it, an address is nothing more than an unsigned integer. It's just a number. So LEA, in a sense, isn't a memory instruction at all, despite its name. Uh, it's actually an integer arithmetic instruction. And we can use any valid SIB addressing mode for integer arithmetic rather than addressing. Uh, according to Intel and AMD, uh, LEA does chuck, <laughs> does throw a couple of exceptions, uh, but not segmentation fault. And it also, it doesn't change the flags register. So if you want to read the flags register after a multiplication, you're probably better off sticking with IMAL. Um, alrighty, so a quick rundown of SIB addressing. Uh, you've got three operands, possibly, in your uh, square brackets with SIB addressing. They're called the scale, the index, and the base. And your base and scale, sorry, your base and index are registers, maybe the same register. Uh, you can use the same register twice if you want. And your scale is a small power of two. So the allowable values for scale at the moment and, you know, in the foreseeable future as well, uh, you can only use one, two, four, or eight on current architectures. I don't think they're going to change that anytime soon. It's been that way for a really long time. Uh, I tend to write, and I will be writing these backwards in the examples. I don't know why, just a habit. So I, I tend to write base plus index times scale. It makes no difference. Uh, and each of the, op uh, each of the uh, operands in these uh, SIB addresses is optional, but you should have one of them at least in there. So we'll see all of this in a second. It's not too hard, but it does take a little bit of getting used to, I guess. Uh, what's this note? You can't multiply a variable's address by that, but you can add to it. 
Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, you can do my var plus 100 if my var is some variable you've declared in your data segment. Yeah, you can look 100 bytes ahead of that address, but you can't multiply the address of my var by 8. I'm not sure why I brought that up, but it's uh, it's true. Uh, Massim is going to calculate any constant expression. Yeah, this is really nice. So if you've written some expression in your bracket, something like 237 plus 78 divided by 16, uh, any expression that evaluates to a constant, a compile time constant, uh, Massim's actually going to calculate that out for us while it um, assembles the program. So that'll be free. It doesn't do that at runtime. Anyway, we're not talking about that. What we are talking about is uh, LEA. So we're going to be looking at a specific circumstance, and it's always good to keep in mind that IML isn't stupid. You know, the people that make these CPUs and the instructions for these CPUs, they're not fools. And uh, often IML is going to be faster than these tricks, but, you know, sometimes uh, using some of these tricks with LEAs uh, might actually give you a bit of a speed increase. So it's just... I think the best thing to do is just try IML and uh, LEA shifts and adds and see which one's faster. Okay, so that's the end of the presentation. Um, we'll go over to here. Okay, in uh, Visual Studio, here's my little front end. So all I've got is a, a couple of functions written in assembly. We've got go IML and go LEA. And they both take a long, long, a really long, long, <laughs> which is the loop count. That's how many times I want it to uh, run whatever trick we're using. Uh, and I've set that to a billion. So it runs a great big loop a billion times, just performing this little LEA trick and performing an IML. And uh, the front end here times both of them, the IML and the LEA. And uh, then we compare them at the end to see which one's faster. Uh, okay, so if we come over here to the ASM side of the world, uh, we can see these functions. So go IML does almost nothing. Uh, I pushed RBX just in case I wanted to use it in the uh, loop just here. And of course pop it at the end there. Uh, since it's not scratch. But most of the uh, function is just the loop. So main loop just here. And here's the bottom of the loop down here. That's going to run 1 billion times. Because that's the value that I passed in uh, RCX. Whatever I put in here will be uh, yeah, what we're timing. So that's where I'm going to put IML. And down here you can see that go LEA is exactly the same thing. It's actually identical. I mean, I'm going to put LEA tricks down here. <laughs> okay, that's good. So the first, uh, the first example that I want to show is um, not, it's not multiplication. It's, uh, it's called a non-destructive addition. So what you might want to do is uh, mod EAX, ECX, and add EAX, EBX. Okay, so let's imagine, perchance, let's imagine that we want to add ECX and EBX and store the results in EAX without necessarily changing ECX and EBX. So that would be a perfectly natural way to do it right there. Uh, it's not multiplication, but I'm going to put it in the IML uh, loop anyway, just so we've got something to compare to. Uh, but what you can do, if you want to use LEA to do the same thing, there we go. Voila, non-destructive addition. So the LEA instruction is going to add ECX and EBX together. You know, the CPU is going to think it's calculating an address, but it's not. Uh, it's going to add those two together, and it's going to store the result of that addition in EAX. Exactly the same thing as these two instructions up here. But what's cool is if I hit play, hopefully... Ah, there you go. So the uh, IML... Well, not IML, the, uh, the MOV and ADD. Uh, yeah, the fastest time there was 322, and the fastest time for the LEA trick was 283. So the LEA is considerably faster there, maybe about 13% or so. Not bad. So if you ever got to do a non-destructive ADD like that, add two registers together and store the result in another register, think about using an LEA. <laughs> think about using an LEA. What a good suggestion. Alrighty, so... What we really wanted to talk about was um, multiplication. Um, let's say, uh, I'm all EAX, EAX by 2. Let's say we want to multiply EAX by 2. Uh, you can definitely use an IMOL, obviously, that's what the instructions for. Uh, but how would you do that with an LEA? Um, there's a couple of ways to do it. We could go LEA, EAX, and EAX plus EAX. 
there we go. So that's exactly the same thing. Um, EAX plus EAX is obviously EAX multiplied by 2. So this uh, LEA just here is going to give us the same result as the IMOL, but if we play, we should see something quite surprising. Uh, you can see how slow the IMOL is. There you go. Look at that. Look at that. So the LEA is around about three times faster than the IMOL in this circumstance. It won't always be. Yeah, don't just... Yeah, be careful. Alright, so that's multiplication by 2. The other way that you can do this, actually, with a, an LEA is... Um, there, use the scale. So EAX times 2 is uh, equivalent. And I think they got about the same speed. I can't remember the time we just got before. It should still be about three times as fast as the... Yeah, it's about three times the speed of the IMR. So that's two different ways of using LEA to multiply by two. Or if you want, you can do... Um, and this is this is, this is is another trick altogether. This is not what the shoot's about, but ship left. Yeah, it's one. Uh, that's another common trick, which we're going to use more in a, just a moment. But um, shifting left... Uh, a register by some amount, x, is the same as multiplying that register by 2 to the power of x. So, yeah, you can use shift left for uh, multiplication by 2 as well. Let's see how fast this is. I think it's about the same speed as the LEA. Yeah, about the same speed. So about three times as fast as an IMOL. Shift left is an excellent, excellent trick for multiplying by powers of 2. Um, okay, so... You might also want to multiply by, say, uh, 8 or 4, if you want. And uh, you can do that. We'll go. We'll just do 8. If you want to multiply by 8, you can use the um, scale 8. So you set your scale value to 8, and that's going to be the same as EAX equals EAX multiplied by 8. Same as this IMOL up here. And, of course, you can do 4 as well. You can do 1 if you want. <laughs> if you want. You can do one if you, I don't know, you want to waste people's time. Usually if you have to multiply EAX by one, you might as well just put a no op in there. Uh, anyway, what we want to talk about now is, uh, in the next, the next trick with LEA is multiplying by values that aren't necessarily in that scale. So we couldn't do, for example, um, you know, five here. You can't do that. You can't do three either. Uh, that scale value there can only be 1, 2, 4, or 8. So how do we get multiplication by 3? Uh, well, there's another really cool trick, and it is to use... There we go, the same register as the um, base and index for your SIB addressing. So EAX multiplied by 2 plus EAX is the same as EAX multiplied by 3. It's the same as this IML up here. Let's give it a play and see what sort of speeds we're dealing with. It should be the same speed as before. Yeah, it is. About three times faster than IMOL. Good stuff. So, uh, if you want to multiply by three, that's how you would do it. If you want to multiply by uh, five, you can do that by using four as the scale and the same register as your base and index. And the other one that you can do using the same technique is uh, if eight is your scale. Yeah, so remember that the scale can only be 2, 4, or 8. If you use 8 as your scale and the same register as the base and index in your SIB addressing, then you effectively get multiplication by 9. Pretty cool. So the values that we can multiply using SIB addressing are 2, 4, 8, uh, 3, 5, and 9. Um, so if you want to multiply by 2, you would just put in by 2, like that. If you want to multiply by 4, you'd do 4 and 8 is that one. And like we just said before, if you uh, add the register as the base and index, you can multiply by 3, 5, or 9 by using um, those. Okay, but we've got a spanner in the works. Let's throw a spanner in the works. So, two LEA instructions are actually faster than an IMIL still. Two LEA instructions are faster than normal. So what can we do with two LEAs? Well, uh, we can get the product of any of these two. So let's pick let's pick two numbers. Let's say three multiplied by five gives us fifteen, which means that we can use two LEAs to get uh, EAX equals EAX by fifteen. So 
I'll just change my IMAL to 15 up there. Uh, what you would do to get uh, 15, you would first multiply EAX by 3, like that. And the next one, you would multiply it by 5, like that. Um, so if EAX equals EAX multiplied by 3, multiplied by 5, then I'm sure you can see it's uh, yeah multiplication by 15. Oh, I'm you're so slow. Ah, there we go. So you can see that the LEAs are sort of slowing down a fair bit. We've got two LEAs now instead of just one, so it's about double the speed, or half the speed that it was, but it's still a lot faster than the IMAL. So if you want to multiply any a number, if you want to multiply by any number that's a product of two of these, so we could choose, for instance, um, 8 and 9 if you want, and you do that with... Uh, Looks like a unit of 72. There you go. That's EAX equals EAX by 72. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of other possibilities as well. So any product of two of those is available to you. But, but let's throw another spanner in the works. Uh, there's a lot of spanners in there, but we chuck another one in. Um, you can actually use uh, LEA and shift left together to get even more uh, multiplication. So this is really interesting, actually. Uh, what I might do is come at the top here. Um, I'm going to be using LEA and shift left together, two instructions each, and uh, this is going to be a little puzzle. So we're going to have uh, three IMALs that I want you to reproduce by using uh, an LEA and uh, shift left. Yeah, let's see what you come up with. So the first IMAL, we're going to multiply EAX by 144. Uh, the second IML I want you to do is uh, EBX by 320. And the third IML we might do EDX by 24. Okay, so give that a shot. See if you can figure out how to use a single LEA and a single shift left to achieve those three. I'll give you a little while and then I'll show you what I came up with. In case you care. <laughs> That's depressing. Okay. Scroll down. This is this is how I would do it. This is one way to do it. I'm sure there's more than one way. So for the first one, um, multiplying EAX by 144, uh, what we want to do is uh, LEA EAX, uh, EAX plus EAX by 8. We want to multiply EAX by 9 and then shift it left 4, which is the same as multiplying by 16. If we multiply EAX by 9 and then multiply that by 16, you might have noticed that uh, 9 by 16 is 144. There you go. All right, so the second one, uh, multiplication by, what's that, 320. Oh, this is interesting, actually. Uh, 320 is an interesting number, I tell you. Uh, people in the 1990s, programmers in the 1990s, used to multiply by 320 all the time was really important to have a fast multiplication by 320 for a lot of programmers. Uh, anyway, I'm not going to say why. If you know why, leave a comment. <laughs> anyway, how do we multiply EBX by 320? Well, um, we're not going to do it the way they used to in the 90s. Uh, this is how I'd do it anyway. So I'd multiply EBX by 5. Settle down. By 5. 5 like that. <laughs> you can't use 5 as a scale. Uh, and then shift left to multiply it by 64. So multiplying EBX by 5 and then multiplying that by 64, you get um, 64 by 5 gives you 320. Good stuff. And the final one uh, is EDX by 24. Uh, EDX plus dx by 2. So if we multiply edx by 2 and then multiply that by... Sorry, if we multiply edx by 3 and then multiply that by 8, we'll get 24. So shift left, edx and 3. And that's going to multiply edx by 24. Uh, okay, so we'll give it a play and we'll see if we're faster than imol. Yeah. Yeah, we're still a little bit quicker than imol. Uh, it's getting closer, the gap's getting closer, so we are sort of using a few instructions here, so the gap's a little bit closer. I think there's probably a, you know, a fair bit of register dependence going on here as well, like the EAX, for example, is being used in uh, two instructions, one after another. 
so uh, maybe that's having a bit of an impact on our LEA's tricks, but uh, we're still faster than an IML, so that's good. Anyway, anyway, I have another, I have, I have another spanner to throw in the works, and I'm aware by, by this point that the works have largely become spanners, but this is the final one. So, what you can do is you can use uh, an LEA, a shift left, and an add, uh, or a sub, and uh, those three instructions are still faster than an IML in this uh, circumstance. So we can get some really weird multiplications if we do this. Um, I'm going to go 73. Yeah, how would you multiply EAX by 73 using uh, an LEA, a shift left, and an add? Uh, I'm also going to use two registers here. Yeah, I should mention that. Um, okay, so this is one way to do it. I don't know how many ways there are to do that. I don't even know why I picked 73. Uh, it just sort of looked a bit a bit excellent to me, so I, <laughs> so I picked it. I'm going to actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get rid of these little 32-bit registers. Let's go to 64 bits, RAX. Um, okay, so... Uh, we multiply RAX by 9, actually, this should be RDX. Uh, we multiply RAX by 9 and move it into RDX. And the, the cool thing, or one of the cool things about LEA is that not only does it do the multiplication, this uh, RAX by 9, but it also performs the mob into RDX in a single instruction. So that's, that's really cool. Uh, then we multiply... Uh, AX by 64, so I'm not just putting mod here, this is mod by 64, and this one is mod by 9. Uh, and then what you can do is add RAX on DX. Okay, so if we multiply a value by 9, and we multiply the same value by 64, and we add those two results together, we get multiplication by 60, uh, 73. Yeah, so that's one way to do that. Let's have a look at the speed. It should still be faster, I think. Yeah. A little bit faster. It's getting quite... Yeah, it's getting pretty close. Maybe we're... 15% or something? Something like that. That's closer to 25, actually. <laughs> Good reading. <laughs> Um, okay, so that's another trick, and that really opens up a lot of doors right there. If you use an LEA, a shift left, and an add, um, you've got a lot of different multiplications that you can perform. Uh, what I do want to mention also is that you can use sub down here, so we could do sub like that, and that's going to result in multiplication by 55. Yeah, so if we multiply RAX by 64 and we subtract um, 9 by its original value, uh, we'll end up with RAX multiplied by 55. Uh, same speed as before. You know, subs no faster or slower than add. Um, what I did want to mention also, though, this is really interesting, actually. If you if you change this back to add for a start, uh, if you don't mind your result being stored in RDX instead of RAX, so here we're back at um, multiplying by 73, only the result is going to be stored in RDX, the speed increase is huge, so you might remember that just a second ago we were at about 75% uh, of the mull. Look at that. Now we're at 45%. It's an excellent speed increase, but I'll tell you what, it's completely pointless because if we make the iMulls independent of each other and uh, store the result of the iMull in RDX, iMull flies. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Yeah, fair enough. So IMOL's even quicker than the uh, LEA tricks that we were doing down here. But um, what you should be aware of, I think, is just that there's no hard and fast rules and changing a single register around uh, can make pretty dramatic speed differences to these sorts of things. So, yeah, just play around and see if you can speed up any multiplications that you need to speed up. It's good fun. Anyway, that's about all I wanted to say, so thanks for listening, all. See you later.